Well, good morning. I want to thank uh, Dr. Dockery for the kind introduction this morning. He and I have been on many platforms together throughout the Southern Baptist Convention. We've worked behind the scenes. We've worked openly with all Southern Baptists and, uh, and have determined to try to make this a denomination as you have as one that really trusts the Lord and is dependent upon him. And uh, I rejoice in the progress being made throughout the convention. And that progress doesn't come sometimes uh, without uh, bumps and scrapes along the way. But somehow God has so honored who Southern Baptists are that it has made a great difference. I want to thank the Southwestern Singers for bringing us to the throne of grace this morning. We've worked together, Dr. Dockery and I, but none of us have come here today to hear the words of one man about another man. Neither have we come to hear one man talking about the institution, our convention. We've come to hear the holy word of God. So stand with me and open your Bibles to the, math, to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. Beginning with verse 1. Then was Jesus led up the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, As it is written. As it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. May we stand and pray together. Father, we thank you for today and the opportunity to gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that you would speak anew to my heart and the heart of every person who's in the sound of this voice. For Lord, we want to hear the voice of God. And sometimes we listen too closely to the chatters of our best friends or our enemies, or however we may designate them. And so, Father, I pray that you will empower us, that you will enrich us with your blessings, and that we might be faithful and true to your holy word. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The Bible continues, and we hear these words. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. as if Jesus did not know about them, as if Jesus did not own the cattle on a thousand hills. He's trying to sell Jesus on something which Jesus already owned, and in fact, which he created. And saith unto them, all these things I give thee, if thou wilt, and he made the greatest bargain that the devil ever made or knew how to make. He said, all things will I give thee 
if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Perhaps you've already heard it several times, as it is written, as it is written. If I were to title this presentation, it would be, as it is written. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto him, Follow me, and I will tell you. Follow me, and I will tell you. And I can't find it. That's not what he said. Let me start right here. From that time, Jesus began to preach. And to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto him, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. To this day, he says it to us. And they straightway left their nets, and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and hearing or healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame spread throughout all Syria, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all the manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers disease and torments, and those who were possessed with devils, and those which had epilepsy, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, to Capolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up into the mountain, and when he set, was set, his disciples came upon him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. He said rejoice, rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. 
You're then the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made did you hear that the scientist of yesterday and today still looking for who created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible is not in conflict with science. Science is in conflict with the Bible. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. I don't know of any great, greater calling that a man be sent from God. And that's a testimony so many of us in this room can give. We were sent from God. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And the world continues to be desperately lost without the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and his death on Calvary's cross. Who is going to tell? It shall be us, if anyone. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. No one is a greater critic of our own service in the Lord than others who are serving the Lord. What a tragedy. For we're to lift each other up each day, to pray for each other, to encourage each other, to be one in Christ, to lead our churches to be one in Christ. His own received him not, and as many as received him, to them gave he the power, parenthetically may I say, the world is looking for power. We want electrical power. We want energy power. We want economic power. We want power, power, power. The whole world knows to look for power. And yet the source of power, real power in all the world, is the power which we hold in our hands. Shall we waste our time looking for the power of the world? 
Shall we waste our time of being critics of others like us who are tending to, to, uh, to preach the word of God? No, we are to look forward and straight forth to preaching the holy word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. What would happen if we were to go from this room today and be able to fan out through the whole United States and began just witnessing for Christ door to door. Sure, there'd be some doors slammed in your face. Sure, you would be rejected on occasions. But remember, you have the power. You have the power the world seeks. They just do not know what it is and know where it is. But you have it. You have it in your hand. You have it in your heart. You have it in your head. The power of God. And there's no greater. And yet even in our own way. We sometimes escape the responsibility. Of looking for the power. Where it is. The power is God's power. Is there any greater power than the power of God? Absolutely not. And yet sometimes we pray as if we're getting it out of the way so we can prepare our message. You can walk prepared into the sanctuary, the auditorium, the worship center. And if you don't preach with the power of God, you have nothing to say. Because it will fall on deaf ears. I had a little theological point to straighten out in my own life. I'd already pastored several churches and I got up to preach that viewpoint which I'd held for a few years and as never before, it seemed to me as if every word I said just fell off the front of the pulpit and landed uselessly on the steps in front of me. I said, oh God, what have I done? I determined to try to determine what was wrong. And I started with the view I'd had to see if that's really what I believed. It turned out not to be. I returned to a view which I'd had since I was a boy in high school in Mississippi. The next time I preached on that subject and on those verses, the people came down the aisle coming to know Christ as Savior, recommitting themselves to the Lord Jesus. Listen, let the power of God guide you. So I was powerless until I found the reason. And it was not that I was honoring the Lord. It was that I was not honoring, uh, honoring the Lord in all that I was doing. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. In him was life, and the light, and the life, and the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Then came the witness to bear witness in the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear what witness to that light? That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Our one objective is to lead others to know Jesus as we know him. Why would we keep that message to ourselves? 
Why would we not look for others in daily life? Listen, the church is on fire for God, doesn't wait for visitation night, even if they wait for that. And knock timidly on the front door. By the way, you don't have to knock it down. But knock timidly on the front door, and they come to the door, and you're shaking to death. Well, we want to come to visit for the church. We do a lot of things in the name of the church. We do a lot of things in the name of Sunday school. We do a lot of things in the name of the structure of our convention. We're so unique to all others. But it's so difficult seemingly to grow Christians to that maturity to do things in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because the world has rejected it. And we're afraid to be rejected with it. The power of God, the word of God, the person of Jesus Christ, tell them and sing a song as you walk down the side, wake away from the house, hoping that they've come to Christ. Either they have or hopefully they will because you've been faithful to the witness of God. We all have failures. I'm not preaching as one in an exception from you. There have been times that I've just completely failed the Lord. Uh, believe it or not, today I have a certain, a certain uh, timidity about in my personality. I'm not one to be openly aggressive. As you can see, I'm just so whatever you'd call it. But I told God early on, I cannot preach. I remember a few others telling him that. You know what God did? He said, well, son, we'll just look at that. And he said, I think I will call you to preach. I said, oh, no. I can't stand up in front of all those people and say anything. He said, you will. I trusted him maybe 99%, but I was not sure but he is faithful. I'm much the man today than I was the boy yesterday. Now, lest you get the idea that I think of myself as a great man. Listen, I am not a great man. I'm as common, maybe less common, than most everybody in the world, in my own opinion. But I am a living example how God can take the common and do with it the uncommon. If you know what it is to be uncommon for the cause of Christ, but you can't quite make it, I have some advice. Give up. And when you give up, what do you do with it? Give it to God. God knows more about you than any person on earth, including your own parents. And as many received him, he gave them power, he said, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. 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 In our generation, all of us tell so many white lies, we don't know the difference anymore. I think white lie is lie, do you not? Tell the truth, even if it may reflect upon your sainthood for a moment. Tell the truth. You don't have to give all the details. Tell the truth to the level that the person is asking for the truth. And God will fill you with grace and more truth. 
John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And you has he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The devil is the prince of the power of the air. Do you ever have a problem with your sound system in the middle of church while you're trying to preach the gospel? Most everybody has. That's nothing more than the devil. Dismiss him and keep talking, and he'll lose sight of his initial objective. Plus, he cannot stand in the presence of the name of Jesus. We're to cast him out. Come nigh to Christ. Wherein past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of now works in the children of disobedience, among whom we all, our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, filling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he made us alive together with Christ and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Is there somebody treated you awful and you're awfully mad about it? And you've been mad about it for a day, you've been married, uh, mad about it for a year, you've been mad about it for several years, get over it. And in fact, if it's the one to whom you married, get over it that minute. It's been proven. <laughs> it builds a greater marriage. If you don't love your spouse more than anybody else at that given time on earth, why not? We live in a society that believes you don't have to get married. A preacher once told me not too many months ago, he said, wow, the divorce rate's going down. I said, don't get too excited. So is marriage. They don't have to get a divorce. They just join up. And you know, they don't know the difference. I can tell them that I'm a minister. I was a pastor. And right in their conversation, within the next few words, they'll talk about living with their boyfriend or their girlfriend. It's out of ignorance. Some of it's out of rebellion. But we can't judge that choice. We have to give them the answer regardless of what they may do with it. And give your wife or your husband a break. The reason it's sometimes tough to get along with husband and wife is because we know more about them now than we ever had. And some have dared to say, if I had to do it all over again, I would have never married you. You know what they're saying? They're saying, because I've gotten to know you so well, I'm not willing to make the effort. And let me remind you, by the way, the really tough thing is for two people at once to decide to work on it. It's not a time to cause 
one to have more fault than another. It is time for both to accept responsibility and pray for God's guidance. How many marriages rely upon the Lord for what they're doing or not doing? Rather than shout it out. That's not exactly the perfect time. So that those who walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that works in children of disobedience. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his love within us, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he made us alive together in Christ. He hath raised us up together and made us together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. The Holy Spirit comes to teach us. And then we learn and we trust. For by, the grace, for by grace are you saved through faith and not, your, of, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works shall many, any man boast. I realize that I've probably gone beyond. I've got a few more chapters to read, but I'll not do so. But let me remind you that I titled it as it is written. As it is written, as it is written, I've collected passages of Scripture and put them together to be seamless in meaning as we understand it. But it's right where it was before I started in the book called the Bible. My prayer is that we've listened today and God has at least spoken to our hearts to say, see how valuable it is. Outside of the moments that you heard me make extraneous comments, which I think you can tell, because one was when I was talking even about God. The other was when God was talking, Christ was talking. I read you the scripture, which I'm sure you all recognized. It's all there. May God help us. And in the years to come, listen, I hope this didn't sound critical because it's not. I'm just saying there is an answer to any dilemma that we face. And we're facing false teachings even in our own churches sometimes. Not good, the Bible says. Truth shall make us free. If any man take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away part of the book of life and out of holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He that testify these things saith, surely I come quickly. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus will be with you all. Just as it is written, behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Behold the word of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You want to turn this world right side up? 
Do it through the power of God and Jesus Christ's death on the cross and people will be saved and the world will go in the right direction. I have no idea how many, as you don't, but it needs to be all we can find so that God may receive all the glory, that heaven shall rejoice and that we shall thank Jesus for using us in that way. Don't pride yourself on being a great expositor of the word of God. If with that, it leaves witnessing for Christ to other people. If you do, you miss something in your seminary class. I believe the professors teach it. I trust that you don't sleep very long in class. But if you doze, find out what he said or she said while you're there and leave with something you might have missed otherwise. We are, we are, that is, the clan my age. We are expectant of what you're bringing to the world. Someday, some of you will be standing in places like this. But if you're standing in the mission field of Northern America, are standing in the mission field on foreign lands. It is Christ who makes the difference. If you're climbing a ladder to greater things, you better watch out. There's a missing step that you'll not see on the way up. And you'll find yourself tumbling again and again. Do you trust God to guide you in his timing and to his place for where you will next serve the Lord? I must confess, while I was in seminary, I rode around the area looking at a church, and I'd tell them, oh, now that looks like a good church. Well, I wasn't ready to, to, to pastor the little one across the street, much less that one. But you know, when you're young, you don't know what you don't know. Think about that one. Because God will teach you. And you can thank God for leading you where he leads you and for your not getting there on your own power. Because in time, it's been proven over and over again, your ministry in some form will be short-circuited if you leave God's way. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God bless you. May we stand and pray. <clears throat> Father, today, we submit our, our hearts, our lives, all that we are and all that we hope to be in Christ. We surrender it all to you. Lord, we pray that we will surrender all of self, that we might have all of Jesus and realize there's a conflict when it's any other way. It's Jesus Jesus, Jesus, something about that name. Lord, bless this institution, which is so dear to me and all who sit here and all who've gone before. And we pray that it will return to one of the mightiest witness for Christ around the world. Sometimes, Lord, we get, uh, we get confused over our theology. Or we get set on teaching all theology. Lord, help us to begin with the Bible and teach the Bible and build our theology from the Bible. Lord, forgive us where we might make extraneous interpretations of our own, which means usually to error. 
in what we've learned. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand, remain standing for this closing song.